Hi guys, here's your video on 9.2 arithmetic sequences and partial sums. So the last video over 9.1 looked at sequences in general. Now we're looking at a specific type of sequence, which is called an arithmetic sequence. So after the video, you should be able to find terms of an arithmetic sequence, evaluate an arithmetic series, and solve application problems. So the first thing we're looking at is the definition of an arithmetic sequence. So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence um, if there is a common difference between each term. Basically, you are adding and subtracting. There is a formula for the arithmetic sequence. It's a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So this n represents the term number, and this d represents the common difference. And the common difference is whatever you're adding and subtracting every single time. So the first three terms of a sequence are 20, 16.5, and 13. Find the nth term and the tenth term. So when I say find the nth term, what you're looking for is the formula for the sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and start by writing down um, the beginning of the formula. I have a n equals my first term, which is 20, plus and minus 1 times my common difference. So my common difference, I need to figure out what the pattern is. So going from 20 to 16.5 to 13. Now since I know that this is an arithmetic sequence, I can go ahead and take the second term minus the first term, and that's what the common difference is. So my common difference for this is negative 3.5. And I should check that it's actually an arithmetic sequence and that um, subtracting 3.5 from 16.5 will give me that 13, which it does. From here, I need to simplify this formula for the sequence, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative 3.5 into the parentheses. So that gives me 20 minus 3.5n plus 3.5, just distributing. So that means the nth term is going to be 23.5 minus 3.5n. And all I did right there is just combine like terms. So now that I have a formula for the sequence, I can go ahead and find the tenth term. And I can find the tenth term just by plugging in 10 for n. And that's kind of what you did with uh, section 9.1. So I have 23.5 minus 3.5 times 10. Because I'm taking um, 10 and just plugging it in since I'm trying to find the tenth term. So my tenth term is negative 11.5. Another way that you could find the tenth term is if you really wanted to, you can just continue the sequence from 13 and keep subtracting 3.5 and keep subtracting 3.5 until you get to the tenth term. You'd still get negative 11.5. Um, it's a little tedious to do that, but it would still give you the same answer. For the second example, I'm giving you the fourth term of the sequence, which is 17, and the eighth term, which is 33. And I want you to find the nth term. So I'm not actually giving you the first term or the common difference. But what I can do is I can use the fact that a4 equals 17, and a8 equals 33 to figure out the common difference. So since this is an arithmetic sequence, your common difference is the same thing as calculating slope. So I can take 33 minus 17, I can find the difference between my two terms divided by the difference of the term numbers. So 33 minus 17 is 16 over 4, so my common difference is 4. Now from here, I still need to figure out what my first term is, because to be able to write the nth uh, term, I need my first term and my common difference. Well, I do know my fourth term is 17, so what I can do is I can go backwards. So I can subtract, so I need to get to my third, my second, and then to my first, so I can subtract four uh, three times and then that'll give me my first term. So 17 minus 4, 
times 3, which is 5. Now that I know my first term and my common difference, I can go ahead and write the formula for the nth term. So that's a n equals my first term, which, my, which I now know is 5, plus n minus 1 times my common difference, which is 4. I can distribute. So that's 5 plus 5 n minus 4. So I get a n equals 1 plus 5 n. All right. The next example, you're finding the first five terms of this sequence. So my first term for letter A is 5, and my common difference is negative 3 fourths. So for my second term, I'm going to take 5 minus 3 fourths, which is 17 fourths. For my third term, I'm just going to continue the pattern. So I'm going to subtract 3 fourths again, which is 7 halves. I'm going to subtract 3 fourths again, which is 11 fourths. Subtract 3 fourths again, and you get 2. And then those are the first five terms of the sequence. For letter B, this sequence is actually written recursively. So for my first term, it's 200. What this notation means is that you're trying to find the next term using the previous term. So if I'm trying to find my second term, I'm using the first term, minus 10. So basically, this minus 10 represents your common difference. So my first term is 200. My second term, I'm going to subtract 10. My third term, I'm going to subtract 10, subtract 10, and subtract 10. And then those are the first five terms of your sequence. So letter B is just written recursively, um, while letter A is just giving you the information uh, right away. The next thing we're looking at is something called an arithmetic series. So a series is similar to the summation that we did in 9.1. So it's just taking all of your terms of an arithmetic sequence and adding them all together. Now there's two formulas for an arithmetic series. Um, and then when you're deciding which formula to use, uh, you're just looking at the information that you have. So for both of these formulas, you need to know what n is. N is the number of terms that you're trying to add together. You need to know your first term. But for this first formula, you're using the common difference. And for the second formula, you're actually using the last term. So for the first formula, you know the number of terms, which is N, the first term, and the common difference. For the second formula, you know the number of terms, and the first term, and your last term. So depending on the information that you have, that's going to determine which formula you use. So if I look at letter A, I have my first term, my common difference, and my number of terms. So the formula that I want to use is the first one, since I have spots for all three of those numbers to plug into. So my n is 13, so I have s13, so that's finding the sum of the 13 terms. 13 over 2, literally just following the formula. 2 times 10 plus 13 minus 1 times my common difference, which is negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and take that, thing, that entire expression, plug it into the calculator. Brackets are the same thing as parentheses, so you can use parentheses instead of the brackets. And you should get negative 104. For letter B, I have my first term, which is negative 10. I have my number of terms, which is 15, and I'm actually giving you the 15th term. So that means I have my first term, my last term, and the number of terms that I'm trying to add together. So now I'm going to use the second formula for the arithmetic series. So I have S15 equals 15 over 2 times my first term plus my last term. So I'm going to take that, plug it into my calculator, 
and you get 675. All right, the next thing we're looking at are applications. So applications are word problems. So again, the important thing with word problems is to be able to read it and decipher what is happening. So a ladder is to be constructed with 16 rungs whose lengths decrease uniformly from 20 inches at the base to 16 inches at the top. Find the total length of the material needed for the rungs. So here's what's happening. You have a ladder that has 16 rungs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Um, it starts with 20 inches at the base. So this down here is 20 inches. And then the top is 16 inches. And what I want to do, can't even see the 16 inches. Let me write that again. So the top is 16 inches. And what I want to know is I want to know the total length of the material needed for all of the rungs. So what I do know is I do know that there's 16 rungs. So that means there's 16 terms in my sequence. I know my first term has 20 inches and my last term has 16 inches. So to find the sum for the series, I'm going to use that second formula that we had uh, for the arithmetic series. And that was this one, Sn equals n over 2 times my first term plus my last term. So I have 16 rungs. My first rung is 20 inches. And my last rung is 16. So I can take that and plug it into my calculator. So I have 16 over 2. 20 plus 16 is 288 inches. So I would need 288 inches of wood, or whatever the material is, to be able to create all 16 of those rungs. All right, last example, Radley's at the park. There he is, looking super cute. Um, he's making a triangular wall with his building blocks. The top row has one block, the second row has three blocks, the third row has five blocks, and so on. How many blocks can he make, how many rows can he make with a set of 100 blocks? So here's what's happening. Top row has first, has one block. The second row has three blocks, so it looks like this. Third row has five blocks, so it looks like this, and then so forth. So we want to figure out how many rows he can make with a set of 100 blocks. So what I do know is I know my first term, because that's my first row. My first term is 1. I can also figure out my common difference, because that's the pattern. It's what you're adding every time. And every time you're adding 2 blocks. So my common difference is 2. This 100 is the total amount of blocks that you have. So that's actually your sum. And since I'm looking for the number of rows, the number of rows is going to be n. So in this case, I'm solving for n. So the formula that uses um, the common difference was the first formula for the arithmetic series. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in. Let's go ahead and write the formula first so you know what we're doing. So I have Sn equals, this is the formula that we're going to use. Okay, I'm going to plug in what I do know. I do know the sum is 100. I don't actually know n, but I know my first term. And I know my common difference. So there is the equation that I am uh, stuck solving. I'm going to go ahead and simplify what's in those brackets. So I have 2 plus 2n minus 2. Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, so that just leaves me with 2n. Okay, so I have n over 2 times 2n. My 2's are going to cancel. 
So I have 100 equals m squared. To solve for n, I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So I get n equals 10. So it'll be 10 rows for little Radley and his triangular wall at the park. Alright, so that finishes up all of your notes for section 9.2.